What's going on everyone? Hopefully the wind is not too, too bad, but I'm here in Kamloops, BC, and I am with Dan in a full-size Range Rover. We got the Driven Hard Sport. We got Chad Locke. We got Steven in his new D5. He's meant to be into it, I suppose. You know, he's designed an older. And then we got an older Sport there. And um, we are gonna have some fun today on the channel, right? Um, so stay tuned, it's gonna be a blast. Right, so low range, off-road height, and we are just going to start off nice and easy. You can see the boys are already up there. It is dusty, but it is beautiful today in Kamloops. So it's a 2013 L405 supercharged V8, 5 liter V8, 510 horsepower. Um, I had a Discovery previous to this. It was a 2011. I've wanted a Range Rover since 2002 with the L322s and uh, wasn't able to afford it back then. I'm still not able to afford a new one since I bought a 2013, um, but it works perfect for me and my wife and our three kids and our little dog and just go out and play in all of this. It's got 22 inch wheels on it for summer. I put my winter 20 inch L494 wheels on it with some uh, mildly all-terrain tires that are rated for winter. We don't get that much snow here. And I have real snow tires if I need them, but right. these work perfect. I had them on my uh, on my my Discovery before, and we're just gonna go out and play. It's a fun truck to play in. It does two miles an hour off road. It does 200 kilometers an hour on the road. It it's not does, does everything in between. Right. So whatever you need it to do, that's what it'll do. So there's not too many other vehicles that really you can say that, right? That no, no. My favorite part of it is. Uh, is putting the tailgate down and putting my kids on the back and having ice cream and just hanging out. There's a picture of, uh, on my Instagram with, uh, with my kids on the back of my Discovery doing that. We haven't recreated it on this one yet, but we will in the future. It doesn't have any modifications to it because it doesn't really need anything. Rich. Yes, sir. Tell us about this beast. I was like seeing you jumping, jumping over the, the sand at the event yesterday. That was, that was perfect. 40 years of crazy experience, my friend. <laughs> Uh, so, 2010 supercharged Range Rover Sport, so it's got the Jaguar 5 litre supercharged engine in, 510 horsepower and a stupid Yorkshireman behind the wheel. Um, 10,000 pound worn, Dyneema rope winch, remote control, wired in, um, normally, well we're running 275, 55, 20s, Wrangler Duratrax. How do you like those? Brilliant. Uh, snow mud everything I've, I've run a load of tires over the last 40 years and these are by far the best yeah um normally lifted about 20 to 25 mil with an iid tool so what is the iid tool because i've heard you mention that a few times all right so the iid tool is a is a tool that um developed by gap diagnostics in montreal okay uh, it plugs into the odb2 port of your land rover or range rover allows you full access to all of the controls of the vehicle so if you want to upgrade a radio modify anything or in my what i normally do is you know, like calibrate the suspension so uh -huh. i've got a, i've got a supercharged sport so during highway riding i want to keep it low so i actually have it as stock do it normally on the highway then when i come off road i just plug the tool in and add another 20 to 30 mil to the base height. That allows me now to be riding four inches above stock uh, when I put it in off-road mode. So Dan's got one in front. Oh. So they're a chunk of change. They're, I think they're about seven or eight hundred bucks. They are by far the best tool I've ever had and I've been driving Land Rovers for over 40 years. So any troubleshooting, any issues that you've got, um, remapping of things if you've got, like your suspension goes out, you can recalibrate it. Um, basically anything, the, the, the three front vehicles, we've all got the same tool. Um, okay. So brilliant. Anyway, that's my sales pitch for Gap Diagnostics. <laughs> um, Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> I mean, I've dropped an LR three in four foot deep in mud and water and being able to reset everything and start again. Um, so anyway, so 
Uh, on this, we were going to show you where the winch control goes. So it's a £10,000 warp with remote control. Um, on a supercharge, and if you look, it shows that you can't actually fit one. So you just have to space it a little bit further in front of the intercooler. It's about three eighths of an inch, but it fits. But then this is where the worn control is. And so I actually use a remote control, um, wireless remote control, but I can then charge it off there. So tight fit, but it does actually fit. Excellent. Excellent. And that's it. Fantastic. Are we going to be using the winch today, do you think? It depends on if you get stuck. <laughs> that's what I bring it for. What do you guys think in the comments? Am I going to get stuck today? <laughs> Dad? I don't know. You got winter tires on. I think it'd be fine. I They're think great. I should be They're okay. Great. All right. Well, the whole idea is think? if you've not got stuck, when you've got three other vehicles with you, you've not tried hard enough. And if that's exactly the point there is right. some there is some clay and mud up there that the uh the mud guys go into so yeah. i mean you yeah. can probably rip a bit more plastic off your truck <laughs> yeah we've got spare zip ties you're okay yeah. Zip ties. We, yeah we we did zip tie something on my truck earlier today but it's just the front cover that comes off you see i guess they didn't have it with yours oh, yeah. this, this front cover oh comes yours off. comes off as well yeah, huh my, i'm we'll see we'll see whether i need to take it off it's the same this has just got some little plastic screws you turn them around pop oh, it off okay. and that that gets access to the front receiver but i have the winch so do i need it i'm not sure awesome i just if you don't know the driven harbor range over sport um she is bone stock i have a thing about stock vehicles i love them um in terms of looks and, and everything it is tuned so it does put out over 600 horsepower with just a really basic ecu tune um, right now, I got my Michelin XI snow tires. We are in Canada. It does drop below 70 degrees. I am not an idiot, and I run winter tires in the winter time. Um, and uh, they're okay. They're not the best. Uh, we'll see how it is again this summer or this winter with them. But um, yeah, like she is, what, a two years ownership, 81,000 kilometers. Um, had a couple of hiccups with her, but it's mostly stuff that I've, you know, broken to be honest um but I, I i i couldn't be happier with her um yeah she's awesome she's got me up things and down things that i just i didn't think was gonna happen and i think today um today should be like any other day we'll, we'll go up and down things that were like how how is that possible when you're cruising down the highway you know the day before doing like 170 kilometers an hour these machines are just so impressive and uh, you know, my goal for everyone here is that you're watching these and whether you're owning one, you're thinking about owning one, you just go pick it up and then you take it off road. You go find some buddies like we got here hanging out um, and just enjoy them. Don't be afraid about getting them dirty. Don't be afraid about any of that stuff. Just get them and enjoy them because that's exactly what they're designed for. If you look here, I've got a low range uh, grass, gravel, and snow because it's loose, uh, yeah. loose grip, loose material with solid underneath, and then both diff locks are in. Raised suspension. I might just flip it into uh, D1. Recommend that starting in third gear. He says here, but they are. So that's what we're up to. All right, carry on. So everyone made it up it's honestly it's just a steep steep climb but you know some loose rocks but it's mostly pretty solid um check out this parking job right that's on a 22 degree slope but uh all right let's do it i'm gonna do mine in uh what do we got we got mud ruts mode here okay so give you guys kind of an inside view just holding second gear you see the rear diff is locked more actively or quicker than the center in mud ruts mode I'm gonna drop
drop it. The first. So Dan, what mode were you in when you uh, went up? I did up this? Uh, rock crawl. You did rock crawl. I did right. rock crawl, and I took the traction control off. Okay, I was. Uh, that's funny. I usually just never mess around with traction control. I started in um, no traction mud. control. Big difference. Should just point that out. Yeah, I took it off, and it was better. Yeah, but no, I don't mean that. I mean oh. it's not actually called traction oh, control. Oh, yeah, whatever it's called. Dynamic stability control, right. and there's a big difference between the two. Uh, I, I know you know what you're talking I know what about. You mean. I, mean, I know I just what you wanted mean. Wanted all right, let, of, let's educate. No, the video, for I, educational, I am, <laughs> I am paraphrasing. I push the button that says I can turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, you want to? Yeah, that be well, actually okay, educational. I think that, that there's a that the traction control. That the DSC is called traction control, and it isn't. There's a big, a big important difference. Traction control happened a very long time ago um, on the older uh, Defenders, the circa sort of 2000. Mm -hmm. And that was a function of applying the brakes to stop the wheels that were spinning. Yes. And that's the same technology that's used on vehicles with open differentials on the back end. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we don't have, well, we do have traction control, but the button that Dan switched off is called DSC, and it stands for Dynamic Stability Control. And what that does is it limits the power to the engine when the wheels are spinning. And on a hill climb like this, that can sometimes be counter-effective because when you need the power, it's not available because the engine has identified that there's some slip happening. Mm -hmm. And so Dan was quite right in some, in, in this case, in turning that off because if you switch that di uh, dynamic stability control off, you don't impede the engine. And when you need the power, it's available. Traction control works sort of in conjunction with DSC and that allows a little bit of slip on the wheels or no slip depending upon how sensitive the ABS cuts in and nowadays that's a function of the TRS mode not a big knob that's said traction control so let's try to find some scenarios paraphrase okay yes if had, yes if I had a beard and a hat and the accent <laughs> I would have had that explanation perfect mine <laughs> traction control <laughs> <laughs> so let's try to find some scenarios where I can challenge this because I just tend to leave traction control on and I'll switch through the modes and just let the computer kind of figure it out and bring me up. 
Um, Usually speaking, that's the best technique. Right, because I didn't... The reason for that is because... Yeah, like I don't think I had any wheel slip. I think at the very end, I could f I could feel it. It started making the... Oh, yeah, but the <clears throat> winter tires on is totally different. Well, <laughs> so much grip. in fairness, uh, Dan and I, I spun a little bit, so did Richard. Because our tread's quite aggressive, and on this loose stuff, it's designed to pick stuff up and scooch it out of the way, mm -hmm. which it is doing, which is why we had a little bit more slip. Your tyres aren't like that. Your tyres are too tightly packed the small side so there's nowhere to spit stones out of the way and it probably just crawled up a little bit yep. more nicely all right well let's just find a way to get the three of you stuck okay no. let's go They're all programmed a little differently, and so it's worth um, taking them out, playing with the different modes. So like we're saying, coming up that hill, I was in mud ruts, Steve was in grass, gravel, snow, and depending on what mode you're in, it does change the vehicle dramatically. So it's worth going out and playing just so that you know when you need it. I don't know whether you want to do this, come back up, have another go at that hill again, but do it in grass, gravel, snow for steel or edge. Oh, well, that's when I came up in. So you know already. Yeah. I was in grass gravel snow as well. You were? And so just you two with the... I put it in uh, rock crop. And you were in mud, mud ruts. Yeah. I think that's why I was bouncing a lot. Hey, well, it'll stiffen the suspension up, you see? Yeah. That's well, the well, every, That's the thing with that one. It lifts everything straight away. So I dropped it back to comfort mode and left it in grass gravel. And it seemed to slide up there a lot nicer. So if you want technical, we well, should let's go back go, down. Let's okay. go down there. Let's now, go down here. One of the things that would be interesting to do would be to just test the difference between uh, engine braking yeah. and the, the, the hill descent control because I've always found hill descent control in certain circumstances can let you get carried away, especially in the, the slippy circumstances okay. because one of the downsides to the hill descent control is that if you engage it on slippy circumstances, the wheel has to spin before it lets the brake off. I've and if you're using the brakes to slow your descent, the problem with that is that when it's spun, it's too late and you're, you're losing, right. you're gaining speed. Whereas with uh, just sticking it in first low and crawling down, you've got the engine and, and it doesn't matter how many wheels, well, four wheels spinning would be a problem. I've never, I've never had that. I, I, uh, yeah, like the only time that I didn't, no, no, you know what? I've always used hill descent D2, control. Disco like it's two, when hill descent first came in, yeah, they were bad for it because they were too quick. Yes. But now with these newer ones, you can use the, use um, the cruise, cruise control, control to slow it down. Mm -hmm. So if you've got, you're right. Hit first gear, low range, but leave hill descent on. Get your feet off the pedals. I think that's the hardest bit. Remember to take your feet. Yeah. Now I came up this bit here. And years ago, when I had the Range Rover, I used to put it in first low, and it'd crawl up just on the idle. Right. But because of the slushmatics that these have, I put it in first low, and it just got to three percent and gave up because it needed it needed power in the torque converter. You see, which is interesting because that eliminates a certain amount of your plodability. Where in first gear low, you can take your foot off everything and yeah. plod up something, but it actually needs throttle even with the diesel. 
All right, let's head down there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do take first gear, hill descent control on. And I'm just going to make sure, so by hitting minus, we're at the slowest possible speed. I'm gonna take my foot completely off the brake and you can see, there it is, no brakes here. I'm being held at basically about three kilometers an hour on a, I think he said it was about a 21% decline here. 14 now, just creeping along. nothing all right bit more in cab view here so same thing i'm just going to put it into s1 low range yeah see it's absolutely gorgeous view got cameraman right to Here we go. 17, 18, 19. No brakes. Just point and steer. And look at that. I am so comfortable at this speed right now. You know, right? Look at this. I wonder if I switch modes, if I go to mud ruts, what's going to happen? Same speed. Same speed. It didn't really change anything there. I'm just going to go back to grass, gravel, snow, and that's it. Just treading lightly, staying off the grass, staying to the trails. Now, I didn't have a very good experience up there. Oh, I've missed it. How did this come down? All right. Yeah, it's just fine. No hill descent control. His right leg's probably burning. That's interesting. I was six to seven kilometers an hour. No brakes, just the engine braking. So not using hill descent control. So basically using hill descent control reduced my speed by half. You can also increase your speed on your hill descent control with your cruise, yeah. cruise control yeah. buttons. Yeah, but that's... Um, yeah, no, that's kind of cool. Well, it is, but if that was slippy and covered in ice, then your hill descent control would scrabble for traction. You know what? Because want. your brakes would slip because the traction on each individual wheel is right. not as good as traction on all four wheels. 
Right. So when you're using engine braking, you have four wheel traction because you're decelerated using your gearbox. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. You know, what? I don't have enough snow driving experience to talk to comment about that because you're the, you know. Well, it, are you, you are you in a race suspension? Are you? Oh yeah. Yeah. See, I must have taken a different line than you because I ended up coming down there quite sharply because it skipped over something. Oh, did it? And shot off a bit. Yeah. He'd be fine in winter. He's got winter tires. Yeah. So was how was that? Ideal. What speed were you at with that? Uh, I was at about eight or nine kilometers an hour, which is a bit faster than I would have preferred to come down. But again, were you low range grass gravel snow S1? Uh, D1, but yeah. Uh, what if? What if I went in S1? I don't yeah. know. I didn't try that. No, I do just S1. It into first. I I always do S1 to lock mine in. I don't have the. I made it so the manual shifting doesn't happen with D. Oh. I'll put it into Sport S1. I've noticed there's a difference in your lower speed between D. Okay, we got to try that. Let's yeah, just yeah, get it on yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. Hey, always start in second. go back, back up backwards. Up that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that'll. Yeah. I was moving out of the way when you Here. Out. Yeah. So you want to maybe? Thing. Do you think S1 will be slower? S1 should be because it'll it lock it. It always jumps into second. It's still coming down fast. It's coming it? down fast. Yeah. So that might just be the diesel. It's, it's the diesel, right? Yeah, yeah, but it shouldn't be because the, the be hill descent should be doing it, not the br engine yeah. braking. Depending on what he has, the hill descent. Okay, that why, why are you running down that? That was S1, uh, foot off the brake, and it was faster in S1. It was 10. And are you, are you sir, in low range? In, are you using hill yep. descent control? Uh, no. Oh, shit. That's what we're trying to That's do. what we're trying to figure out. Hill descent control? Yes. Yeah. Well, I know it'll be slower with that on. Well, no, I know, but that's what we all thought you were doing. That's well, why we were like, why are you I so was, fast? I was trying the difference between D1 and S1. And S1. Okay, but before, you were, you were saying, when you just came down before, you were coming down too fast. What yes. were you comparing that to? Well, that was, I was comparing that to yours. Because I'm in hell descent, oh, no, the, the, the one. The second time around. The second time. Because you came down at six. Six, seven kilometers right, an hour with I no hill descent. nine, so you're two, two kilometers. But you know what, I got, but that's probably the engine now. The engine, I got the five liter, you got the TD6. So oh, that, you this. You have more compression than me. I probably have a higher compression rate. Well, no, no, you'll have a lower compression rate, but okay. you'll have greater displacement, so more pistons. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about, but <laughs> it's clearly the Range Rover's better. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Cle oh, clearly the Range Rover's better. That's the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right, I'm going to go up and come back down with hill descent control. Okay, so let's see, because I was at three to four kilometers an hour in yep. S1 hill descent control. Well, you can set your hill descent control to nine kilometers an hour. I well, I know you could, could, but that the you point's to go slow. All the way to the bottom, and then it'll just do nothing. <laughs> it'll just cut along. And that's where I was at. It's, it seems like, I know it's the same front suspension, but it seems like yours isn't drooping as much in that little that little gap. I don't know if you're Now that's interesting. A, that's what I wanted you to tell me. That's what it appears so, like. And drooping, what do you mean by drooping? So you mean your, like front, your left front tire actually leaves the ground. Yeah. And that's when you start to speed up. And then it skips yeah. along and then, it, and then it catches the ground. That's again. what I wanted to know. Yeah. So I don't, mm. they are the same front suspension as that one, that one, and mine. Uh, the, the Disco 5, the Range Rover Sport, and the Range Rover all use the same front suspension com right. components. Okay. So mm. it should droop more. Maybe it's just the line that you're on. Well, I'm, now I've got this in, I lowered it because of Richard's. Uh, experience on the way up and my experience on the way Whoa. down. 
I'm remember I'm two inches lifted, so me in comfort mode. It's is still our off road height. Off road, off road height. Right. Mine's an off road height. So if you go to normal off road, off -road height, because yours is lifted a little bit, isn't it? Half an inch, yeah. Half an inch, right. So you put yours in off road height. Oh, so yours is oh, lifted maybe, a little bit. Yeah, maybe it's, it's, not, inch, yeah. it's not drooping enough. Right. Well, when you lift You're it. You're older, it needs to, you know. It needs to droop. <laughs> <laughs> it actually do. It should droop. One, one of the downsides when lifting a vehicle. Let me get this. I need this one. One of the downsides to lifting a vehicle with an e-lift or rods is that you increase the pressure on the back because mm -hmm. you've got to make it go up. Mm. Increasing the pressure on the back means that the suspension is stiffer. Right. And so you need more weight to move that air. Now, if you've got, like, I don't know, two inches of, of lift and then you put it in off-road height, now you've got four inches of lift and you've got a lot more pressure holding that up and you're also reducing your ability for the suspension to drop by two inches because your midpoint is your midpoint and if you set your midpoint up you've only got so much right mm -hmm. you can drop if that makes sense so you do lose low downward travel with a, an e-lift or a, a rod which is same same theory as viagra basically you've got more drip you've got more lift and less droop but if you use the alice you can off-road all weekend <laughs> <I'll take> <laughs> <laughs> all right so are you go, are you gonna go uh, yeah, one more time i'll take your word maybe if it goes slower Oh, he's 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 two feet further over though to the right, so that's a better line. Is it operator error? No, do you want to know an interesting fact? Your rear video. differential lock doesn't lock in reverse. Really? It was staying open. Staying open all the way up, which is why when they got halfway up, you got it, you started spinning. Isn't that interesting? Now he's wondering, should I just do that same line in reverse to see if there's any what difference? Because now that's... yours is newer, so it'll lap it will have newer TRS program. Right. And mine is, what's yours, 2019? 19. So yours might have a slight update. I don't think there'll be much in it. There uh, shouldn't be a massive. And what update. year is this one? 2018. There, yeah, there shouldn't be a massive update. The other thing that I was going to mention to what you mentioned, and you were talking about with your engine, is that this diesel weighs more than yours. That's so true. I'm wondering whether they've got different suspension programming for the front backs. Your it has to lift more. you um, your front tire didn't come off the ground only for just a split second. On the, this way down. But you also took a different line. You were about two feet further over to the right, yeah. so you took the right line, yeah. the correct line, and it was much better. Yes. Okay, let me go in reverse. You wanted to drive on the English side of the road, and that was wrong. Yeah, I know. Well, I was trying to make it more difficult. I would not take the line that goes right up all those loose rocks, but that's just me. There he goes. I don't know if he's choosing a different line or if it's choosing it for him. Turn to the left. There we go. Now when I went up, I went a different line than that, didn't I? Uh, you went just, you turned about the same. Just before that big rock, you um, you turned and kind of snaked up. But he's now in your hole there where you, uh, you slid. Keep going. We'll give him a thumbs up. Yeah, keep going. His wheels are already scratched, so the worst that could happen is already done. Keep going. So is that where I was digging a hole? Yeah, because the back right tire yeah. actually comes off the ground there. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's wet. 
no, it would have been mm, muddy maybe. What is it? If it was wet, we'd be at the pub. Fair weather off road is here, Richard. Have you noticed that? No, it gets way too slippery. So that was, oops, sorry. So that was just in D. No S1, just drive. And it yeah. was holding me at about four kilometers an hour again. Yeah. Well, it will do because putting it in S or D1 doesn't affect, that's not your constraining factor. No, your not. constraining factor is yield descent control. You can put that in D8 and it'll come down at the same speed. Do you have to prove it or test it? Or? Uh, you can't just say stuff. You don't have to, but I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you want to, sure. Right, so that won't. Ill descent won't. control won't affect it. Okay. Uh, sorry, the gear the, won't affect the, the gear it because the ill descent control is what's slowing you down. It's keeping you there. Okay, that, that makes sense. Now you went up there much better than I did. No, I say that's just driver ability. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you chose a pretty piss poor line myself. I did. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure why you went up all no of the loose where rocks. I was, going. I was getting all confused. Did the mirrors work in the in the 2019? I, too much was going on. All right, guys. So quick outro. We got Jip. Looks like siding on a slight upgrade there. Yeah, looks like it. Right, he's going for the super well, turn. dog. So we were talking about having some differences with uh, engine braking and downhill assist. What's it called? Downhill Hill descent control. Hill descent control. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Yeah, and right. hey, I tested it out. You were right. Um, Don't tell him that. <laughs> I know. Hey, what did I just do? <laughs> Set it everywhere. <laughs> you were right! Oh, Lord. All right. Um, I tried to put video. it into high, higher gear yeah. in, uh, while it was going down the hill on yeah. downhill. And uh, it only goes to fourth. Yeah, right. it, won't go, it won't go anywhere, um, anywhere past, past that. that. However... Um, when I put it in third, of course, it dropped a gear, so it slows down more, put it in second. So gearing up to, I guess, four will play some sort of role, mm -hmm. but I think that is more because it's telling the engine, right? right? Not so much the actual gear. Right? Yeah, I think that's possibly right. Uh, the technology will figure out the speed anyway, so it'll, it'll incorporate all systems to, yeah. to, to provide that, I think. Um, I did notice that the... Uh, the rear differential lock doesn't work in reverse. And that was, was the same for me. When you we were going yeah. up that hill, I saw it. And yeah, the center was full lock, but the rear just stayed open. Yeah, that's so I wonder. I wonder. Oh, well, I can't see the benefit for that, to be honest. I mean, uh, it would, both the, because we were picking a wheel up at that point, it would have been nice to have that rear diff lock in play. It would have helped to reduce the front wheel spin, I think, because both wheels would have been pulled. I don't know if it would have helped reduce the front, but... Um, yeah, no, that was interesting. I've never noticed that before. Well, I've I never gone backwards like that before as well. So, uh, you know. I have noticed, and we've just mentioned this, uh, Richard and I, when you drive around in D, in grass, gravel and snow, uh, quite reasonably because it wants to avoid slip, yep. it, it shoves it into D3. Well, yes. Cause which is fine. Yeah. Until you start climbing some of the things that we've climbed here, mm -hmm. uh, which you need grass, gravel, and snow for because it's the kind of terrain, but they're steep hills and they really need second or first. And for some reason or other, um, it doesn't it doesn't let you do that. So you've really got to keep on top of. Well, that's where you have to switch gear. it into. Yeah. You just stick it in. Sport. So all of yeah. this I've done today is in, uh, put it across, pull it across into left hand side into yeah. sport. Yeah. Then which it automatically puts it in second and then you kick it back yeah. into first and, and it just holds it in first and you can crawl. I've done less than a thousand RPM over all of this, just mm -hmm. pottering around on mine. Mm -hmm. um, but you were mentioning about, doesn't matter what gear you're in, hill descent control will take over when you're going down hills. I've had things overheat where hill descent control and your traction control and that, if Not you're working well. it hard, it overheats and then you lose everything. So while we're on a video and people are watching us, 
stick it in first. If you're going down a steep hill, yeah, just put it in it. first across sport mode first, low yeah. range. Yeah. Still use your lose, use and let let the hill descent control do its thing. Take your foot off the brake, but you've got it in first anyway. If anything else happens, the engine's still got some control. If it defaults over. out, you've still got some. Right, and occasionally. Very, very rarely, but I have had it where you, if we've done a lot of four wheel and you've done hard things, occasionally it just goes, options are all gone, forget it, you've got nothing. Well, one of the downsides to using hill descent control is that you do eat the brakes up. Less of an issue when you've got big calipers like you two, but more more of an issue mm. with the, mm. uh, the diesels which have the smaller calipers on yeah. because you've only got so much brake disc yeah. there. I mean, it's fine in this weather, it's only yeah, about zero degrees, but... I agree. Um, or whatever it is, 10 degrees or whatever, but uh, but it is a, it could be an issue that you know with a mm. smaller brake caliper you're likely to heat up more quickly. I would say. Yeah. Sure. All right, man. Well, hopefully I can get out to Alberta. Huh? We can play in the snow. We have somewhere for you to come and play. Yeah, we do. And yeah. we will use the winch, and you will need more new zip ties. <laughs> we will get with so yeah. these guys, huh? <laughs> No yep. zip ties. Now I've noticed that you don't have a rear recovery point on this. Is that something you're going to modify? So the rear recovery point is actually behind. Oh, so you can pull that. This removable panel. panel. Yeah. Oh, so it's okay. behind there, and then I keep like. Uh, uh, where's, yeah, I got the shackle in here, and uh, just boom. Cool. Then well, that's good to go. I so. didn't know that they had one of those. If you, because mine's got a tow bar, and so is his. So, and you know what? I'll probably opt for a tow bar next time because it is a, it's a hidden deployable yeah. tow bar, and you can really use that, can't mm. you, as a recovery point as well? Or, uh, I know my, not the ball. My yeah, but no, not, not the, ball. the ball. But if you, no, you, you can get a two inch with a D shackle on it. Okay. So both of ours have got a big ring on the back anyway. Right. So that's what I always. Because normally I'm snatch pulling, so I'm using a snatch yeah. strap, which is a lot more. It, snatch snaps actually kinetic better. Kinetic stroke, a kinetic that's, rope. That's the one. Kinetic, kinetic, kinetic strap. strap. Must get go. one of those. Sure. I'm showing my age now, um, but off that big, and I'll, if you want, we can sure. show you um, my Mother's Day present from my children. Uh, so this is where Joy of. And then you've got this is where you put your two inch receiver fitted, okay but we i normally have a d shackle in there and i pull straight off that yeah so if i'm doing any off-roading i'll use that ring rather than pulling off that okay it's one less joint one less connection um and i i actually when i'm following you'll see it on your video actually um I actually have that worn hyperlink fastened in mm. so that it's really easy to get to. I'm not trying to dig underneath the bumper. It's really easy to get to when we're falling in there. I suppose, really, we're, we're talking about very minor uh, differences. You know what I mean? We're talking yeah. about all, the, all of these four cars uh, have, have performed everything in here with great mm. ease. And, of course, mm. there was nothing challenging at um, no it was all a very like everything was diamond, too easy right? like, yeah. it was just i you really you know it's what is when you start getting into slippier surfaces or more cross axling that you're going to start to to determine the differences between this or that or that yeah. or whatever and that's what you guys promised me in alberta yeah, I mean, you, we've got something planned for you. We can we will go over to a place called Waiforas or uh, Ghost River Valley or yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah. And there's a lot of... That's actually where I've got a photograph, a video of the Defender going through some water. and, mm. and uh, the Well, we do McLean climb. Creek because you want a bit more aggressive. So we yeah. do McLean Creek, wait till it's frozen. Because yeah. um, that is... That's where it's seriously off-road. Okay. Um, that's where I that, that video buried made, a thing. Buried a thing. Mm. And you do you can you can lose a vehicle there fairly easily. Mm. Curiously enough, I've lost a I lost my LR3 there. <laughs> <laughs> there. <laughs> so yeah. that's two of us. <laughs> there you go. Yes. <laughs> and, so if you've got an LR3, don't take it. It'll get us ducks. <laughs> <on. laughs> You'll drown it. <laughs> drown it um, yeah. But it's it, that's you know and and realistically these vehicles now you, with the technology they've got. As a as a new person like we did yesterday, mm -hmm. they will get you everywhere and anywhere. You trust the yeah. equipment, trust the training that you've had. And like we've potted around here on some crazy hills, first gear, low range, and the car just does it. Um, 
you know, in some ways it's sort of dangerous because it makes people think that they can get, go anywhere mm -hmm. and they sort of can. Um, just be smart and, yeah. you know, I suppose you're, you're out of your mood, you know, your video is really, don't do it on your own. Don't do it. Okay. You know, well, you know, literally 90% of my videos are on You know, my own. you know, <laughs> if I, somebody asked me a couple of months ago on one of the videos, what one piece of information, one, one piece of guidance I would mm -hmm. give, and it's this. Make sure you know how to do a failed hill climb and make sure you know how to go across side banks safely because everything else mm -hmm. is just a matter of getting stuck in a bog. Right. right. It, the only real things that are going to trip you up and cause you some serious damage are, are rolling the thing, and mm. that's very easily done if you don't know if how to know back how out that. of the problem. Right. No. So if you, if you want to do one thing and you want to learn a little bit more about off-roading, the very first thing I think anybody should ever teach you is how to exit a failed hill climb and how to, how to go across a... Um, yeah. uh, an angle safely, and you know this, everything else you yeah. can fix yourself with another well, car or you know, a tow truck. You're, you're right, and, and you know I think one of the other things, you know, don't as, as much as these are brilliant vehicles, four wheel drives are brilliant things. The, the, you mm. get out and go walk. If you're not sure, go out and walk. Um, yeah. Walk first, um, and and as like tonight, um, as soon as the sun sun starts going down. Yeah. Book it out. Yeah, get my out. hand. I can't feel my hand right now. It's right. So cold. Well, it's, so, it's, like, it's not even. It's not even the cold. It's it's the shadows are different. Um, Every, yeah. yeah. This, everything looks different. I, I everything remember, looks different right now rem, than it did. Well, I remember two hours four ago. wheeling as a kid in a place called Tong near Bradford mm -hmm. in an old Range Rover Classic, and I was coming up a hill like this, and there was a bank like that, literally, mm -hmm. and I stopped just for. I have no idea why I stopped, but I stopped, got out, and had a look. And it was a 20 foot sheer drop. Jeez. But it was it was like this and it just looked like it was a drop. If I'd have gone off the end, I'd have been nose first. <laughs> so and that was one of those I have no idea why I stopped to have a look. I was prattling about with a friend of mine as a kid, as you do. Mm -hmm. And that was always a note to self. Stop and get out and have a look. Especially when you're in dusk like this, because you can't see shadows. Sweet guys, on that note, we're gonna take off. I'm, I'm just, I'm freezing. We're hungry. I'm freezing. I'm from BC, <laughs> These from Vancouver. Softies from Vancouver. Oh my like God. Softies. Like, I'm like, we, go play, go, 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 we need to get yeah. into Yorkshire. Ah, yeah, that'll, that'll freeze him up. He'll never work again. All right, guys, let us know what you thought of the video. Like it, please. Appreciate that comment. And uh, I'll link to Steven's channel. Do you have a channel? No, I don't know. He's anti YouTube. No, no, no. I'm, not <laughs> anti -YouTube. I'm just stuck between two YouTubers. <laughs> yeah. Rose between Till two next time, everyone. I'm a Let me know what you're driving hard.